Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much, have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Trayvon's RV Center. Here to congratulate you on the purchase of your Intex Soul Horizon. Cool little travel trailer here. I'm here to show you around it, show you how to use a few things, and get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. The main thing I want you to take into consideration here is where your water and electrical hookups are. It's gonna be behind your tire, on the off camp side, your driver's side of your tow vehicle. Power here water hookup right there so park accordingly so that you can utilize the facilities at the campsite once you arrive you have a power tongue jack on the front with a docking light simply retract or extend to bring up get your unit level might want to put a little stick on level on the side once you got unit level next thing we're going to do is stabilize your unit on all four corners, you have a stabilizing jack with three quarter inch socket. Simply put your hand crank on there and run these down. Now you can use an impact driver or a drill gun, but because these don't have so far to go down, I don't think it's necessary. But I do recommend our jack pads. Jack pads are gonna protect the feet from your stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, hot blacktop in the summer. Better distribute the weight. Use your 10% off coupon, grab a four, four pack of those, put them on the ground, and run these down just until they're taut. Remember, these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. So you just want to get it stable. Run one down on all four corners. Once you get our unit level and stable, we're going to go ahead and hook up our power and water. Power hookup. 30 amp service. The way these go in now is they wiggle on, turn to the right to lock, and then put on your black washer. At the end of this 30 amp service, should you need to plug into 110, is this 30 amp to 15 amp 110 adapter. Put that on the end if you need. Got our power hooked up, let's hook our water up. Intech made it real convenient to put both your potable water and your city water right here. First and foremost, water pressure regulator. You don't know what the water pressure is at at different campsites. So I always use this water pressure regulator when putting fluid into the unit. It's going to reduce it to 40 to 50 PSI and protect the lines in your unit. Hook up your hose. Hook up your water pressure regulator, but don't turn your hose on yet. Right next to your connection is your hot water heater. All we're going to do at this point, this whole door comes right off. All we're going to do at this point is make sure our drain plugs in. You may have left it out the last time you were camping. Go ahead and put that in there snugly. And then you know that you can turn your water on. If your water's been on for a little while, you're gonna come up here to this pressure release valve and pull on that handle. It's gonna release air out of the lines. So you get a nice steady flow of water coming out of here. Then you know you can turn on your hot water heater. Now there is a on off switch down here. Keep that on off unless you're plugged into 110. Plugged into 110, turn it on here as well as indoors. Should your hot water not be working, got these little bulbs here, they'll pop out. They do just come out here and press that back in, that's a reset. So we've got our water hooked up. Let's say we're gonna be dry camping. If you're dry camping, you're gonna fill up here. Now two ways to tell this is full. One, there's an overflow valve right here. Or two, you can go inside and hold the button down for your fresh tanks and tell when it's full. Again, burp your hot water heater the same way, get the air out of the lines, light that from indoors, 
Just remember, whenever you're using potable water is when you're going to want to use your water pump. Don't use your water pump if hooked up to city water. You already, it's already pressurized. So water and electricity is all hooked up. We're ready to camp. Let me walk you around the outside of the unit, show you a few other things. Over here are a prep for solar. You can plug solar panel in here. It'll trickle charge your batteries. And down here is where your cable hookup is. Again, your hot water heater. Your big pass-through storage with your hitch work there. Come on the outside of the unit here. This is access to the back of your fridge. This is your furnace heat release. If you're running your furnace, steer clear of that. It'll get rather warm. Down here is your tank dump. And over here is where you'll store your sewage hose. There's a vent for inside. You have a canvas piece that you can put across the front of this. It snaps on here, protecting your automotive grade glass. In the front of your unit here, I've taken one out. You just have to remove these cotter pins. And this is where your propane will be. Remember, you do have a regulator here. Simply point it toward the tank you wish to be using. You open it up, you see it'll turn green. That'll hold your door open for you. Your campsite, you do have a couple of 110s here. You also have a spray port. Open that up, pull that spray hose out. You can spray your unit or dog or yourself off. Inside your outdoor kitchen here, simply push down on that button, pull everything out. This is a 12 volt fridge freezer. Just depends on what you sent the temperature at up here is how cold it'll get. You do have your griddle here, utensil holder. Simply pull this out and quick connect right there. Right up underneath your outdoor grill. When returning your grill, make sure you disconnect your LP. Push this down and it slides right in and your stereo door closes. Well, it covers everything on the outside. Let's go ahead and take a look inside. The first thing I want to mention, when you come inside the entry doorway, is where the fire extinguisher is. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is by the entry doorway in case of emergency. Just to the left here is your 110 with GFCI reset. Over here's all your lighting. Bedroom, accent porch. To your left, your kitchen accent light and your awning in and out. You have a power awning on this. Right above there is your smoke alarm. Coming to your stove. This does have an automatic lighter. Hit that to light, hold your button, and there's your flames. Shut that off. Your kitchen sink, the only thing I want to mention there is you do have some plumbing to keep an eye on and maintain. It's all packs in there now. Underneath your bed here, here's your 12 volt carbon dioxide detector. Now the reason I mention that's 12 volt is if you're gonna be gone for the day and you don't have anything charging your battery, this is gonna run your battery down. So disconnect one of your battery posts. That'll keep this from running it down. Our battery disconnect. Up here is a hand open crank or max air vent. You hit, simply hit vent open and the vent automatically opens by itself. Fan on in four different speeds. Fan off, vent closed. Fan off. Here's your thermostat. Different modes from off to auto fan to auto cool to heat. Just set it at the desired temperature. You have your sound system here. Your speakers. A little lighting around the bed. You also have a 110, a 12 volt, and more bedroom lights that you can turn on and off from the bed. You don't have to go to the front. Your wet bath, as we call it. 
You do have a hand crank open. Exhaust in here. Here's your lighting. Nice toilet paper roll to keep everything dry. Big mirror on the back of the door. Self-explanatory microwave. Jensen sound system. AM, FM, Bluetooth, disc. Really nice sound system. Uh, three different, there are two different zones. You can play your music indoors or outdoors or both. Over here's your J Command Center. This is where you check the level of your batteries. Your fresh tank, this is where I said when you're filling your potable water, hold that fresh in. You can tell when it's full. And then of course your black tank. Here's where you turn on your water pump if you're using potable water. Here's where you turn on your water tank heater if hooked up to electric. Or your water tank heater, that's a pad that is on your tank to keep it from uh, freezing. Only use that in inclement weather. Here's where you turn on your water heater if hooked up to gas. And your water heater if you're hooked up to electric. Dometic. You can set this to electric or gas or battery. Come down here to change the levels of your temperature. Pretty easy. Heat release here. Now your table. So I want to show you something about your table. How to turn this into a bed. So up above here, and your dual cabinets will open right up. There's another cushion and a bar. So I'll show you how to remove these ones. There's a handle down here to tighten or loosen. Have it loosened up already. Simply lift the top off. Untwist to your left. Lefty Lucy. Come up here. Pull your short leg out. Set that in. Righty tighty. Set your table down on top of that. Move your cushions a little bit to get this to set right. Once you have that down, bring your cushion down. And it stores on top. Giving you your bed. This bar can now store up here. Safely for travel. Over here on the side. Here's your battery disconnect. So this is where you want to turn your battery disconnect on. That'll shut off the power to the unit. That'll keep uh, your carbon dioxide detector from running your battery down. 12 volt and a couple of USB ports. Access panel. To your breaker box and fuses. You got 40, a 20, and the rest 15s in there. Highly recommend grabbing a handful of them and taking them with you. That about covers everything on the inside. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite and close up. First thing I'd like to do is go through and make sure I have all of the lighting shut off in the entire unit. Head on out. Bring up all four of your stabilizing jacks. Unhook any propane you have hooked up. Come around here. Unhook your water. You're gonna bleed your hot water heater out, bleed the lines out. Remove the drain plug, preferably with a socket, that'll be releasing hot water. And then head on up to your dump station. At your dump station, take your sewage hose provided, hook it up, and pull your black handle. After that sounds like it's no longer draining, you're gonna go ahead, open up, and store our sewage hose right in there. That about covers everything. Hope you guys enjoy this trailer for many years to come. Happy camping.